Broadcasting from Philadelphia, this is another Hammerdella production. You are about to be entertained by some of the biggest names in show business. For the next hour and 30 minutes, this program will present in person such bright stars as... Milton Berle. Rosemary Cloney. Jimmy Lorani. Frank Lovejoy. Gordon McRae. Ethel Merman. Meredith Wilson. And my name, darlings, is Lula Banquet. <laughs> The National Broadcasting Company presents The Big Show. The Big Show, 90 minutes with the most scintillating personalities in the entertainment world. Brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at the same time as the Sunday feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And here is your hostess, the glamorous, unpredictable... Lula Bankhead. Well, darling, yesterday the producer of this show told me that I had been mistreating our guest stars, that I was insulting, belligerent, rough and tough. Well, I've come to the conclusion that he's right, and I'm going to tell him so when he gets out of the hospital. <laughs> From now on, I know what I'll do. Every time I find myself losing my temper, I remember this little motto. One, two, think it through. Three, four, don't get sore. Five, six, never mix. Seven, eight, hesitate. Nine, ten, friends again. This is not sweet. <laughs> I found it on the back of a box of the largest oatmeal flakes I've ever eaten. <laughs> but you just notice how it works as I introduce our first box of oats. I mean our first guest, Ethel Merman. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with the greatest of pleasure that I now present that lovely, charming, gracious first lady of musical comedy herself. Well, Ethel, get it over here. <laughs> Who, me? I said Ethel Merman. <laughs> Was that you saying all those nice things about me? That's right, darling. Well, cut it out. Why? Because then I'll have to say nice things about you when I'm not that good an actress. <laughs> One, two, think it through. Three, four, don't get sore. Well, I, I can't hear you. What's the matter with you? Oh, Ethel, I'm fine. I'm all sweetness and light. Now, let's not start any quarrels, shall we, darling? Can't we just chat without bickering about who's a better actress or who's older than who? That's okay with me. I don't like to bring up the age question. Good. How are you doing in your wonderful musical comedy, Call Me Grandmother? <laughs> I didn't call me madam. Tallulah, well, you're starting. Uh, I'm sorry, darling. I, I didn't mean that. Please forgive me. Okay. And just to show you there's no hard feelings, I want to tell you how much I admire that gown you're wearing. Where'd you get it? This? Oh, well, so it's just an old sack. I think it's very attractive. Oh, well, that's sweet, darling, but it's just an old sack. All right. Where'd you get that old sack? <laughs> One, two, think it through. <laughs> this old sack, as you call it, cost me $750. Well, potatoes are rather high, aren't they? <laughs> Three, four, don't get sore. And I see they left some of the potatoes in the sack. <laughs> Those are not potatoes. <laughs> One, two... Kick her with your shoe. <laughs> Three, four, sore on the floor. <laughs> now look here, Ethel. Can't we be civil to each other? Must we have a war? Here comes that civil war bit again. <laughs> Five, six, hit her with bricks. <laughs> civil war, indeed. Ethel, I am smiling between clenched teeth. Excuse me, I should have said the war between the plates. <laughs> Seven, eight, mention her weights. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. <laughs> okay, that does it. Step aside, Buster. I tried, heaven knows I tried. Didn't I try, darling? Didn't I try? <laughs> Thank you, darlings. And now, my pet, I'm really going to let you have it. Now, you listen to me, Ethel. If you think you're going to, um, um, uh, well, any time you think that I, uh, 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 but what were we arguing about, darling? I don't know. The minute I walked out here, you started calling me names. Lovely, charming, gracious. 
Is that a way to introduce me? Nobody ever accused me of being lovely, charming, and gracious. Who do you think you're introducing? Mary Martin? <laughs> this is Ethel Merman. All right, darling. Drag it back to your chair and we'll start all over again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce at this time the first lady of our theater, Miss Ethel Barrymore. But since Miss Barrymore wouldn't work for that kind of money, here's Miss Ethel Merman. <laughs> How's that, Ethel? 10, 11, go to heaven. <laughs> What's your song, baby? It's a song Irving Berlin wrote, and which he says was inspired by your last show on Broadway. Oh, really? What's the song? There's no business. 1819. What's that? Uh, nothing, 1819. That's the year you introduced. There's no business like show business. <laughs> Sing it, won't you, darling? <laughs> get your gun. And if anybody else wants to take a shot, what are you waiting for? Just a minute, Chaloo. Is that a nice thing to say? Now, you stay out of this, Jimmy Durante. <laughs> Chaloo, I'm ashamed of you. This is a great singer, this Ethel Mermaid. <laughs> I'll tell you so. All right, Jimmy, I'm sorry. She's a great singer. Wait a minute. Something was lost in the translation. <laughs> try to patch this up, but I know what's eating her. She's jealous, and I want you to go over there and tell her I said so. Go on and tell her. Go on. Way over there? Yes, go over and tell her I said she's jealous. Okay, I go. <laughs> That's what says to tell you, you're jealous. Jealous? Oh! Go over and ask her jealous of what? Okay. <laughs> She says, jealous? Ha! Huh. Jealous of what? Jealous of my singing, that's what. And you can tell her I bought her records, and I could never listen to a full record. It's a waste of shellac. Tell her that. Okay. I should have got paid on this show by the mile. <laughs> uh, Chalou, she said she heard you sing, and you're full of shellac. Tell her, on my behalf, that I find her outburst of temperament a nauseating. 
a revolting display of public exhibitionism. Okay, this one may take a little longer, but I'll keep you. <laughs> I should have worn my track shoes. <laughs> Tallulah says to tell. <laughs> Tallulah says to tell on her behalf that she finds her own voice of temperament. A uh, reporter, nor saving, <laughs> disgusting. She didn't say disgusting, I just threw that one in. <laughs> Something I picked up on the travels back and forth. Well, you can tell her for me, oh yeah. Just oh yeah? You're allowed ten words for the same money. <laughs> I'll tell her myself, oh yeah. That certainly is a clever retort. Oh yeah, went out with high button shoes. Well, you ought to know. Just a minute, just a minute. What are you trying to do, eliminate the middleman? Come on, girls, how about making up and being friends? But Jimmy, darling, Ethel and I are friends. Sure, Tallulah's one of my best friends. That's friends? Then how about making up and being enemies? You know, of course, Ethel, I was just joking about your being jealous. Oh, sure, and I was just joking about your being jealous. And I was only joking about your temperament. <laughs> and I was only joking about yours. And naturally, I was only joking about your voice. Well, I think I'll go sit down. <laughs> well, I tried. Every week it's a battle. Meredith, how's that for music cue? Meredith Wilson, the big show office and chorus, and Joshua, fit the battle of Jericho. If you can. Divine Meredith. Tonight on the big show, we are privileged to hear a portion of a truly great new Warner Brothers picture starring Frank Lovejoy. Here for the first time on the screen is an exciting expose of the subversive plotting and conspiracy by the Communist Party to destroy a great American city, Pittsburgh, USA. The title of this hard-hitting picture is, I Was a Communist for the FBI. The story of Matt Sabetic, a steel worker of Pittsburgh, whose nine bitter years as an undercover agent for his country was told in the Saturday Evening Post. We are proud to present in the role of Matt Savetic, Frank Lovejoy, and I was a communist of the FBI. <laughs> Sir, a short time before the communist leaders went on trial in New York before Judge Medina, the Pittsburgh officers of the Federal Bureau of Investigation were advised that Gerhard Eisler 
communist big shot of the United States had arrived in Pittsburgh on an important mission. Almost immediately, too, 38-year-old Matt Savetti is alerted by his commie boss in Pittsburgh. Savetic, I've been called to a meeting at Gerhard Eisler's hotel. I'll call you later if I have a chance. I don't know how much more of this a man can take. My brothers won't speak to me. My own son looks at me as if I was something that lived under a rock. And my mother, God help her, thinks I'm a traitor too. How would you like to leave your own mother's birthday party and go out on a mission like this? Uh, I'll get it. Well, Matt, come right in. Hiya, Blanton. Hiya, gentlemen. Well, this is some layout. Look at that table. Champagne, huh? Yeah. Caviar, roast turkeys, the works. Huh? Uh, you better get used to it, Matt. This is the way we'll all live when we take over the country. The workers, too? The workers will still be the workers. Trouble with you, Matt, you're too much of a fanatic. Who is a fanatic? Svetic, Mr. Eisler, Matt Svetic. It's good to meet a fanatic now and then, but at the same time, we must be realistic. Here, try this champagne, Matt. It's nice stuff. So come out, Stalin. I've heard some good things about you, Mr. Svetic. Your parents were Slovenian, I believe. Yes, sir. According to reports, you've brought hundreds of your Pittsburgh nationals into the park. Yeah, Matt works in the personnel department of North American Steel. He does a lot of the hiring and firing. Hiring of party members and firing of non-members. I understand. That's excellent. Uh, try some of this caviar, Sovetic. Russian caviar. The National Committee has decided to reward you, Sovetic. Peters has been transferred, and you will take his place as chief party organizer for the district of Pittsburgh. Well, thank you, Mr. Reisler. I feel it's a great honor. But that means you must work harder than ever. This section produces more steel than all the rest of the country put together. Move Pittsburgh an inch, and we can move this country a mile. But Pittsburgh is too quiet, too peaceful. To bring about the victory of communism in America, we must incite discontent, riots, and open warfare among the people. That's the purpose of tonight's special meeting. It was Landon's idea. A lovely thought. For the Soviet Union. That's the way you do it. It's very simple. And a lovely thought. Arrange wildcat strikes, bring in murderous goons to break heads and spill blood, incite riots, set race against race, creed against creed, destroy a great city. That's the way you do it. We fought back from inside, but it's not easy. You stay in the dark, a lonely hunted thing, knowing no friend, no companionship, no ties of home, no moments of peace and contentment with those you love. No, a rat lives with nothing but fear and watchfulness and the smell of death always near. No, it's not easy, not when your own folks are involved. Or when you're called in by the principal of the school your kid attends and told that there's something wrong with him. That he's trying to lick every other kid in the place. Who was the girl who brought us into this room, son? Miss Merrick, my teacher. Oh, Miss Merrick? She seemed nice. Yeah, she's wonderful. Regular. She seems to know you. Really? Well, Dick, what's eating you? Why have you been trying to lick every kid around here? You know why. Because they say you're a lousy red. And I hit him. Uh, look, son. Dad, I haven't seen much of you since I went to live at Granny's house. When I ask her about you, tears come into her eyes. She starts talking about something else. I'm no dope, but I know what people say. Though I wouldn't believe it. Look, Dad, it's time you and I had a showdown. I want to hear it from you. What are you going to do, Dick? Tell me how to think you're a little young for that. I'm close to draft age. Guys as young as I am will have to go out and fight this thing they say you're mixed now, up. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you think I'm going to let you criticize my political beliefs... Oh, Dad, don't give me that line. Tell me the truth. Are you red or not? All right, I'll tell you the truth. I'm a member of the Communist Party, and I have been for nine years. 
when I was a kid, about nine or ten. I used to tell myself I wanted to grow up to be like my dad. Before I do that now, I drop dead. Now, wait a minute, son. Keep your hands off me. Don't ever come near me again. No wonder Reed Merrick seemed to know me. She was a card-carrying party member and a teacher in a Pittsburgh school. If she was more than that. She was important to me as a person. When my own son turned against me, I felt I'd had enough. I wanted to get out. I decided to go to the FBI and resign. Hello, Matt. Uh, look, look, sir. I've, uh, I've about had it. I've had nine lousy years of it. You know, when the day is over, you guys have a home to go to and people who are happy to see you. I've got nothing and i got nobody. I don't think I can take any more. I know. You've done a great job for your country, Matt. Maybe you won't have to wait much longer. But if you do leave, we'll do everything we can for you, of course. But you know, when a red plant goes sour, we have to deny you. Otherwise, we'd endanger all the others who are working as you're working inside the Communist Party. Yeah. Now, let's have the details on the Eve Merrick business last night. You had my report. We know she was a card-carrying commie working as a school teacher. that she got sweet on you. Ah, uh, yes. She moved right into my heart. She was ordered to do that so she could watch me as a spy for the party. But she didn't turn you in. No, and she could have. She found out about me. She decided to work with me instead of against me. What about that business last night? The commies got suspicious of her, tried to liquidate her. He gave herself away. I got her out, and I killed the two comrades they sent after her, but she's safe now. I thought you were going to give her protection last night. I tried, Matt. Our man was found murdered this morning in her room. Oh. Ah, uh, look. I want to go on living in a place where you can holler out loud and print if you want to. And where the secret police won't be knocking on your door at 4 a.m. Uh, that uh, sound corny? Not to me. All right, you forget what I said about it before. Now, there's a big party meeting at the Lake Hotel. I'll get a microphone planted there. You better get the stuff for the record. Good boy. We'll keep an eye on you, too. Luck. Thank you. I didn't know it then, but that meeting was the last I was ever to attend as a communist for the FBI. The comrades were in fine voice, and thanks to the microphone on the wall, the FBI next door were in fine ear. Comrades, I don't think I need to tell you that the Un-American Activities Committee is becoming a danger to us. The hearings that it's conducting in Washington are bad counter-propaganda. Moscow has ordered a nationwide campaign. And you division leaders of the Pittsburgh branch are to pass this on to your members. All communists are to spread the word that the Un-American Activities Committee is a group of fat-headed politicians whose only aim is to crash the headlines. We want them laughed at, ridiculed. If we start the ball rolling, there are plenty of big mouth suckers in this country who will do the rest. We want to see you in here. Yeah, sure. Now, what's on your mind? Two of our comrades were killed last night while acting under my orders. Also, Svetik, why was there an FBI man planted in Eve's place? Find anything on him to prove he was FBI? No, but what else could he be? Listen, if you knew that Merrick Dame had a chance to save her skin and you let her get away with it, you're a traitor. You know what happens to traitors. Trotsky thought he was safe, but they got him. Jan Mazarek was dropped out of a window in Prague, and they called it suicide. General Kravitsky was found dead in a Washington hotel. They call that suicide, too. Hundreds of comrades who made one slip have paid for it with their lives. I slipped up once, but I can't take a chance with you. Come on, talk! You're crazy, Glenn. Work them over, boys. You're going softly. Okay, boys, beat it on them! A lot of comrades, don't you commies get along together? Who are you? Lieutenant Cahill, homicide. Which one of you is Matt Savetic? I am. You're under arrest for suspicion of murder. Well, who did I kill? James Broderick, an agent of the FBI. His fingerprints are all over the place. Come on, Savetic. <laughs> And 
and that is a dramatic foretaste of what is in store for you when you go to see Warner Brothers' great picture, I Was a Communist for the FBI. Frank Lovejoy and company, our thanks and congratulations. Well, thank you very much, Tallulah. I deem it an honor to play the role of Max Sabetic. It certainly brought home to me the patriotic devotion and the sheer guts that Matt needed to take that nine-year beating. There was a job to be done. Someone had to do it, Frank. Frank, this is Max Sabetti. I think you do a great job in the picture, Frank. Well, you're the guy who did the great job, Matt. Believe me. Well, Frank, maybe you'd better wait until the job is done before we start taking vows. The job is far from finished. We're just beginning to fight back against a deadly, ruthless, highly organized Soviet-controlled conspiracy. So we've got a lot of fighting yet to do before we can rid ourselves of this greatest threat to the world of free men. We've got to fight. All of us. All the time. Amen to that, Matt. <laughs> Good fighter, good American. Wilson and his big show officer. And now, darlings, it's about time for me to ring my chimes before we continue with the show. Uh, j- just a minute. I ring the chimes around here. Who are you? Milton Burrow. <laughs> well, Uncle Milton. <laughs> well, Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Excuse me, the pancake make a fool me. In fact, this picks up action. What is this bit, uh, Tulu, about you ringing the chimes? Don't you know I just signed a 30-year contract around here, and this is now known as the National Burl Casting Company? <laughs> and Burl rings the chimes. It is broadcasting, and I ring the chimes. Okay, broad, ring the chimes. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. This is NBC, the National Broad Casting Company. The Big Show. This is the National Broadcasting Company, Sunday Extravaganza, with the most scintillating personalities in show business. The Big Show, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival, is brought to you by famous Canon Towels. The towels that give you the most for your money in beauty value, lovely color, and design. 
by Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison, for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The big stars in this program are Milton Burr, Rosemary Clooney, Jimmy Durante, Frank Lovejoy, Gordon McRae, Ethel Merlin, Meredith Wilson, and the Big Show Orchestra and Chorus. And every week, your hostess, the glamorous, unpredictable, Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> Well, darlings, it has been a most hectic week. Look at the size of this audience. Quiet. As I was saying, this has been a most hectic week. If you think this is a big audience, you should see my mother's living room on Tuesday nights. <laughs> a few weeks ago, somebody gave me a little puppy, and I've had the most hectic time with her. Radio. I haven't been on radio since Hectic was a pup. <laughs> She's the cutest little dog, but I've had the most terrible time breaking her in. What a house. And she's the friskiest little thing. All these people still listening to radio? What a spot for a television salesman. I never saw such beautiful brown eyes and the most cunning ears and the most adorable mouth. Oh, you finally noticed me. And the longest tail. I thought I had that tucked in. Oh, what's the use of continuing with this? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, one of our greatest comedians, Mr. Television himself, Bob Hope. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. What a point. Yeah. Sound like Ezio Pinza. Yeah. What's with this Hope routine? The name is Burroughs. So well, what? you get all your stuff from Hope. I thought I'd go right to the source. <laughs> Suppose you don't use any Hope's jokes on this program? Absolutely not. You won't find a Hope joke on this show. That's what I hear. There's no hope for the show. <laughs> and I've heard that joke before. <laughs> you heard it before anybody. <laughs> Milton, you have to take everybody's jokes. Haven't you heard Shakespeare's wonderful line, He who steals my purse steals cash? Well, it's your show. You ought to know. <laughs> but I can call a little Shakespeare myself to little about the jokes that you steal. Oh, isn't he sweet? Sweet, file 364, sweet. Romeo and Juliet, act two, scene one. That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Romeo and Juliet, act two. Parting of such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Do you want to hear more? Do you want to hear more? I would rather die. <laughs> die, file 396. Julius Caesar, act two. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. The Tempest, Act One. That'll be enough of that, Mr. Burl. Base, King Henry the Sixth, Act Five. Of all base passions, fear is the most accursed. Milton, you really surprised me. Sure. I, I, I didn't know you were such a student of Shakespeare. Are you kidding, too? I can quote every line of every play Shakespeare wrote. If you say I steal jokes from Bob Hope, I can show you where you steal jokes from Bob Shakespeare. Uh, Bob Shakespeare? What radio show is he on? Caesar and Imogene Coker. <laughs> King Henry the Aldrich. And uh, he doesn't work on this program, The Taming of the Big Shrew. To say nothing of your program, Comedy of Errors. <laughs> oh, that's a very good show. It's funny. But, oh. I, <laughs> very funny, but I already used it. When? Next Tuesday night. <laughs> Milton Burl, that stealing comedian. That says Sterling. Will you read that right? <laughs> <laughs> don't start ad-libbing, Julie, because I'm one of the best ad-lib comedians in the bit of, in the book. Don't go away. <laughs> really, I am. Let's face it. I am the best ad-lib comedian in the business. Uh, don't you mean ad lib <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Wait a minute. That lady in the orchestra, will you please come back and take it, you coward? Don't walk out now, please. What do you leave for? Take you an hour to get out of here. <laughs> Sit down and leave at the end of the show when everybody's asleep. Now, uh, where were we? What was I stealing? I mean, what was I saying? I don't know, darling. We were talking, but you weren't saying anything. And besides, Milton, on the big show, we try to keep to what is considered good stage deportment. No. We don't suddenly start conversations with the audience. We don't have to. We feel there is already between the performer and the audience a certain uh, uh, rapport. Rapport? Is he in the audience? <laughs> I knew him. His name was Rappaport. He used to own the party scene in the Bronx. I remember. He used to sell Indian nuts on Independence. <laughs> Milton. Where is that man? 
Bill and Dolly. I don't know whether so we're it's laughing your... at them. Well, <laughs> I don't know whether it's your influence or not, yeah. or whether it's just a coincidental. Yeah. But there seems to be a lady in the fourth row flicking a chicken. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Mother, will you please stop, please? <laughs> I keep telling you, Salute, but she won't say, Mother, stop it. You know, I don't like you to do that. Besides, I like duck. Now, you know that. I'll see. I seem to get the impression that I've been all through this before. Something I saw in a bad dream. By the way, Salute, did you ever watch my television show? Uh, that was a bad dream. <laughs> oh, it's going to be like that, huh? Okay, if that's the way you want it, fasten your safety belt. I heard you talking with Merman, but this is different. Tallulah, you're looking pretty good. You take your ugly pill this morning? <laughs> All right, let's start. You wear that dress. Don't care what anybody says. Glad you're wearing your hair that way. In fact, I'm glad you're wearing your hair. <laughs> What's that, a snood? From the back, you look like you're traveling for a mackerel. From the front, you look like you caught one. <laughs> that enough? Can I see your face on a bottle of iodine? <laughs> let's go over the house tonight. We'll open a gas jet. <laughs> you look like five miles of bad road. You look like a professional blind date. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I right, Maxie Rosenblum's on. <laughs> Have you had enough? Have you yes, had enough? I, okay. I've had enough. 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 i have had enough 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 i have
<laughs> now, Milton, Milton, let me get on with the rest of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet our next guest, a bright new singing star, lovely Miss Rosemary Clooney. Thank you, Tanula. Milton, this is Rosemary Clooney. How do you... <laughs> Tell me, Rose. Mm -hmm. Oh, I... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Rosemary, you don't mind me uh, if I call you Rosemary, do you? Well, I, I don't think I know you well enough for that. Well, all right. Uh, uh, tell me, Miss Clooney. The circle 51099. <laughs> Five. Just a minute, Milton. Please, I don't know you well enough for that. <laughs> All right, just a minute, Miss Burl. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> now, look here, I didn't bring you on this show to date up our guests. I take care of all the dating around here myself. Now, what's your phone number? I may call you next week. Circle 5, 1099. <laughs> Circle 5... Why, that's Rosemary's number. Where do you think I'm going to be? <laughs> Josie, would you mind singing your song, darling? What's it going to be? You're taking a chance on love. That's the story of Burl's life. Sing it, sweet. Let it be. Sing it. I thought love's game was over. Lady Luck had gone astray. I laid my cards on the table, unable to play. Then I heard good fortune say, they're dealing you a new hand today. Oh, here I go again. I hear those trumpets glow again, all aglow again, taking a chance on love. Fear I slide again, about to take that ride again, starry-eyed again, taking a chance on love. I thought the cards were a frame up I never would try But now I'm taking the game up And the ace of hearts to tie Things are mending now I see a rainbow blending now We'll have our happy ending now Taking a chance on love I thought the cards were a frame up I never would try But now I'm taking the game up And the ace of hearts is high Things are mending now I see a rainbow blending now. We'll have our happy ending now. Taking a chance on love. Taking a chance on love. Here are two gentlemen who never take a chance on anything but introducing that sponsor's product, Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. Say, Bing, you got a minute? Oh, sure, Bob. I've got all the time in the world. Don't tell me you own that suit. Oh, never mind that stuff. Get to work, will you? Okay. Folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. And you can prove that yourself. Just make our mildness test. Buy Chesterfields and open them and enjoy that milder, mellow aroma. Now light one up. And you'll know Chesterfield's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. 
Yes, mildness and no unpleasant aftertaste of what you and I and every smoker wants. Hurry up, Dad. Here comes the music. Bye, Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfield's a milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open the pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. And now, darlings, we want to thank Warner Brothers, producers of Captain Horatia Hornblower, who have sent us one of their handsome stars, a fine singer, an accomplished actor, the star of his own radio show, The Railroad Hour. And if you'll give me a moment, I'll think of his name. Uh, Gordon McRae, darling. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Gordon, I, I haven't seen you since you were on our show in Hollywood. Welcome back to New York. Well, thank you, Tallulah. You know, New York is really home to me. Oh? I got started right here in New York. As a matter of fact, I was a page boy right here at NBC. You wore a page boy? No, 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 no Tulula, I was a page boy. Oh, excuse me, darling. Were you really a page boy? I certainly was. As a matter of fact, we had quite a group of page boys when I was here, Tulula. Dave Garraway was a page boy during that time. That was ten years ago, you know. Let's see, there was Garraway, Dick Haynes, Paul Rittenhouse, Gregory Peck. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, what do you know? Whatever happened to those fellows? (laughs) I don't know, Tallulah. I lost track of most of them, but uh, one of them, Paul Rittenhouse, is doing very well. He's a floor walker and an (laughs) A.M.P. As a matter of fact, Tallulah, D. Engelbach, your producer and director of this show, was a page when I was on the staff here. When I get through with him, darling, he will be again. <laughs> well, now, how about you, Gordon? You went a long way starting as a page boy. I certainly did. I became chief guide of the tours. You know, Tallulah, I used to take people through NBC and those tours they have, and, well, I'd give them a little spiel. Oh, really? Well, what sort of a spiel? Well, let's see. Uh, it was ten years ago, and it went something like this. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to take you on a tour through the broadcasting studios and other points of interest in Radio City. I must ask you all to stay in one little group and follow me. Uh, little boy, you'd better hold on to your mother's hand. Uh, I don't want to hold on to my mommy's hand. <laughs> well, why not? Because she's married, that's why. <laughs> Madam, is this your little boy? Yeah, what about it? Uh, please, hold his hand. He might get lost. Are you kidding? That's why I brought him here. <laughs> I want to see Uncle Milky. Where's Uncle Milky? Daddy, I want to see Uncle Milky. If you don't stop saying them dirty words, I'll wash your mouth. Good evening, good evening, good. That's what takes a cold gas is. Good. <laughs> all right now, all right, people. Follow me into the studio. We're on our way to see some of the sights. Now, there's a sight if I ever saw one. Adam, I beg your pardon. That's Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> Who's he? <laughs> no, no, sir. That's Miss Tallulah Bankhead, and she's rehearsing a new show that, shot, that she's starting. I want to see. I want to see Uncle Milty. Junior, will you shut up? Where's Uncle Milty, Mommy? Jimmy, he's your son. Make him shut up. I told you to stop talking like that. Now I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> well, not even know, Jimmy. Look what happened to you. <laughs> Look what he said to me, Mommy. Now I'm going to need a nose job. Quiet. What's going on there? Can't you see that I'm in the middle of a rehearsal? Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Bankhead. I'm just showing this group through the studios. They wanted to see what you were doing. Well, I'm just starting in radio. It's a new show called The Little Show. Five minutes with some of the biggest names in show business. (laughs) Only five minutes, Miss Bankhead. How can you present the biggest names in show business in five minutes? Well, so far, I only present our names. And someday I hope to have a program. Who knows? Maybe in ten years, this may work up to an hour and a half. Is, is that Uncle Milty, Mommy? Shut up! That is. That's Uncle Milty. Hello, Uncle Milty. Get your sweaty paws off me. <laughs> kid like that. If this was my child, madam. And don't call me madam. <laughs> One, two, think it through. Okay, folks. Let's get on with the tour. No, no. I want to stay here with Uncle Milky. I, I like Uncle Milky. You like me, Uncle Milky? 
I loathe you. <laughs> and I am not your Uncle Milty. Ah, uh, yes, you are, Uncle Milty. You're just wearing that funny dress to fool me. You always wear those funny dresses. If you take off that costume, you look just like Uncle Milty. <laughs> Want a bet? <laughs> Can I do it again, please? Can I use the mail? How would you like a shot in the head? <laughs> oh, that's clever. How would you like a shot in the head? I must remember that for when I grow up later. But I might forget it. Wanna bet? <laughs> Why don't you give the kid your autograph? How would he like it? In blood? <laughs> Preferably yours. All right, all right. I'll give everybody an autograph. My sister will do it. Oh, come here, Eve. Yes, Miss Bankhead. What's all this about? Eve, and she doesn't know what it's all about? <laughs> Three, four, don't get sore. Eve, is that young man coming yet? You know, the one who's going to sing on the program? Oh, no. He called up and said he had a bad cold. What? And we go on the air in five minutes? Whatever will we do? Uh, I sing, Miss Bankhead. Please, give me this chance to make good. Let me sing in his place. All right, boy, this is your chance. You can sing. Oh, Mommy, what a corny plot. Shut <laughs> up. I told you we shouldn't have brung him here. Next thing you know, he'd be wanting to go to the... I want to go to the... You see? What did I tell you? <laughs> hey, boy, where is the... Uh, I don't know where it is on this floor, sir. It's straight down the hall and to the right. What do you know? This is Uncle Milky. <laughs> Come on, son, I'll get you a drink of water. Thank you, Jane. All right, boy, this is your chance. Sing, begin the begin. When they begin the begin, it brings back the sound of music. So tender, it brings back a night of tropical splendor. It brings back a memory evergreen. I'm with you once more under the stars, down by the shore, an orchestra's playing. And even the palms seem to be swaying When they begin to begin Living again is past all endeavor Except when that tune clutches my heart And there we are and promising never, never to part. What moments divine, what raptures to read. The clouds came along to disperse the joy we had tasted. Now when I hear people curse the chance that was wasted, I know but too well what they mean. So don't let them begin, oh, begin. Let the love that was once a boy remain an ember. Let it sleep like the bed is I only remember when they begin the begin. Oh, yes, let them begin the begin. Make them play till the stars are there before return above you. Will you whisper to me once more? Darling, I love you, and we suddenly know what heaven we're in when they begin the begin when they begin the begin.
we have a lot more show for you in just a moment. But first, let me take a second or two to ring my chimes. This, darlings, is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is the big show, and here is Tallulah Baghead. Well, darlings, we continue with the, um... Uh, just a minute, Tallulah. I got a complaint. What's your trouble, Jimmy? I'll tell you what's the trouble. You got me playing Milton Boyle's father. It's preposterous, inconjurious, and abdominal. <laughs> abdominal? You mean abominable. Abdominal. I can't stomach it. <laughs> well, what would you rather play, darling? Milton Berle's mother? I can't play her. I can't flick a chicken. <laughs> yes, Jimmy. I guess you are better just playing your own darling self. Where's the future in that? There's so many other people who can imitate Granny better than I can. And what do you want to do, Jimmy? Play something suave? And why not? I'm one of the biggest suaves in the business. <laughs> Everybody does imitations. I can do some imitations myself. Listen to me do Ronald Coleman. It is a far, far better thing that I do than I did if I did it. <laughs> Which I don't. And I would if I could if I were king, but I can't. Because the queen won't let me. <laughs> How was that? Chalou? That sounds like Jimmy Durante. How do you like that? Now Ronald Coleman's too and Durante. <laughs> but Jimmy, why do you want to do something different? We love you, you are. Sweet, simple, untutored. Untutored? I could get pretty sore if I knew what that meant. <laughs> you don't be all wrong, Chalou. I got culture, I got class, I got a library card. And besides, I'm a patron of the arts. I said, you. Now, seeking my favorite diversion last night, a night at the opera, I steps into my flush up bolstered handsome. With my two footmen commanding the poop deck, and my Arabian steed going in a gentle trap, we approach the Metropolitan Opera House, and what happens? The red carpet is rolled out. My two footmen descend from the poop deck, they open the door, and I steps out. Looking up from the gutter, I said, who told you to remove the running board? <laughs> Picking myself up and ignoring the stairs of the white balloon, I makes my entrance gallantly into the diamond horseshoe, removing my top hat, my nylon gloves, my skunk muffler, and my patent leather goulashes with the neon button. <laughs> I looks around, Mrs. Van Schuyler is whispering to Mrs. Murray Hill. Mrs. Murray Hill is whispering to Mrs. Susquehanna, and what are they saying? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it Superman? No, they shouted, it's a bum. <laughs> you see, a vicious rumor has been circulated just because I work in a saloon. They say I'm not fit to mingle in any other circle. That's ridiculous. Nightclubs are just a Mr. Hyde part of me. You have yet to meet the Dr. Joyce. I'm the Rammy, the patron of the art. I'm not for a critic and a man of parts. Why, last week I went to the opera. I loved it. All but one scene. That's where the 350-pound soprano sings to the baritone. She sings, take me in your arms and hold me close. Why, the whole look close to bum and have to be curved like a banana. <laughs> Those not from lovers or raven handles, Largo. Why, I heard better music written by Umbriaco. Now, what I say may sound absurd, but believe me, it's true. I've seen every opera, and I'll name them for you. Tales of the Vienna Rules, Madame Buttermilk, and the Sex Set from Leachy Nuts. <laughs> I hope to Pranus and tennis in their parts. Cause I'm the Randy, the patron of the arts. Now, just the other day, they held a meeting at the Metropolitan. In the cellar. They said, Jimmy, we're in the hole. You gotta help us out. Stepping up on a soapbox. Left over from La Bahim. I said, gentlemen, let's analyze this. Now, take Romeo and Juliet. Romeo wants to kiss Juliet. But does he say, slip me a smack of sister? No. He says... I will give you a kiss, my love, a burning kiss upon the lips, a burning kiss, a burning kiss, a 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 burning kiss upon the lips. By the time the guy's ready to kiss her, the fire is out. He's making a federal case out of us. Face to the committee, I said there's only one way to save the opera. Now, 
Get yourself new lyrics and a clever and new. Like bibbity bobbity bibbity bobbity bibbity bobbity blue. They all taste tanks from the bottom of their hearts. To Durani, the patron of the art. Yes, sir. Durani, the patron of the art. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way, discover the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. <laughs> Now, here is a man who has a 30-year contract with NBC, and he's got 30-year-old jokes to match, Milton Berle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please, not too much applause. This is an old building. Isn't that Kalula wonderful? Isn't she really wonderful? Tell us. Is that a woman? Is that a woman? That's what I've been asking myself all evening. Is that a woman? <laughs> I like the way she speaks. You know, the way she talks to that little Richardson guy. <laughs> she sounds like the voice of Firestone with a blowout. <laughs> Believe me, I love her. She's the kind of a girl I like to take home to my mother. <laughs> with her, I can trust my old man. You know, <laughs> I love you. I really do. Tallulah, if I said anything to offend you, I've succeeded. <laughs> How about the talent on the show tonight? Look what you're getting. Jimmy Durante, Gordon McRae, Rosemary Clooney, Frank Lovejoy, Texaco Merman... Texaco Mermans. I'm not allowed to say Ethel. And, uh, <laughs> oh, that's a gasser. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Milt. You should have been twins. <laughs> I was. My mother threw away the wrong one. You know, I didn't say <laughs> My mother, these are the jokes. Let's face it now. <laughs> Laugh at them now, figure them out later. <laughs> I gotta do this for a living, you know. I got a new racket. I smuggle baseball players into the polo ground. <laughs> Baseball. How about that team? I heard that DeRosha is going to sell the team. Really, I just read an ad in the paper. It says Macy's are going to have a Giants sale. <laughs> and today those Giants lost 11 in a row. Uh, uh, I'd like to lose 11 in that row. They're not laughing. <laughs> now get with it, please. I, I'm not replaced for 30 years. You can be replaced in 30 seconds. <laughs> I like that deal I made with NBC. I've got another 30 years to go on television. I'm so happy about it. I, I feel like Errol Flynn on a raft with Phil Spitalny's orchestra. <laughs> I thought I lost you. I gained on you again. My whole family is very happy about the deal. Even my brother Frank. Now, you take my brother Frank. I wish you would. Now, he, ever since he was old enough to work, he hasn't. <laughs> My mother used to say to him, Frank, learn some kind of business, though. At least we'll know what kind of work you're out of. <laughs> One, two, three, this is for free. I don't want to say that my brother Frank is lazy, but when he heard that Judy Holliday won the Academy Award, it made him so happy. He loves her name. It has a holiday in it. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Clever stuff? Funny material? Huh? So how come I'm back on radio again? <laughs> I love radio. I, I used to be in radio myself until I got wise. And what a program I used to have. In fact, when they took the last rating of my radio show, they found out that 50% of the people in the studio weren't listening. <laughs> I had a wonderful program. I was on for Stereotan. I was on from 9.30 till 9. <laughs> Which joke do 
you working on? <laughs> I had audiences every week laugh. I thought they'd never start. But, that's, <laughs> but I miss radio. I, I really do. I used to love to listen to old radio. I mean, this is the new type sparkling dialogue radio. I like those old commentators. Uh, they're so exciting. Like H.B. Calvin. You say, good evening. Is H.B. Calvin? <laughs> Sounds like he backed into a hot radiator. <laughs> I really miss those old things on the radio. And then there was Gabriel Heater. He's around. He says, Ah, there's good news, fellow. <laughs> and Walter Winchell, he says, Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North American, all ships at sea. This is Mr. Winchell's bad boy, Walter, broadcasting you from the Waldorf in Rita Hayworth's sweet flesh. A flash, flash. <laughs> Those are the things I miss, and those beautiful, sincere radio commercials. Do you have those dull, loggy feelings? Do you feel like you missed three hours sleep? Do you? Do you? <laughs> Why don't you go back to bed? <laughs> have you seen Dr. Clyde's new prismatic glasses? If you have, send them back. You can't see a darn thing without them. <laughs> Have you tried Feigenbaum Sunshine Irradiated Vitamin D Mickey Fins? Try a vitamin Mickey Fin before you leave the house. You'll go out smiling. <laughs> Feigenbaum, spell backwards. It's easier than spelling it frontwards. Of course, I miss those singing commercial jingles. Murray's nasal drops in the bottle. Try one, folks, and then you see what'll happen when you use Murray's bottle with the syringe on top. <laughs> Can you, do you talk in your sleep? <laughs> do you talk in your sleep? If you do, eat one of Murphy's meatballs. No more tossing, no more insomnia. You're just later dead. <laughs> I miss those things, especially those daytime radio serials. And ladies and gentlemen, Common Tossers Dunkable Donuts present the thrilling story of life can be lousy. <laughs> the first word from our sponsor. Ladies, do you suffer from clean laundry? Do you use whole wheat yo-yo? Are you suffering from dandruff? Do your eyes bother you? Are you having trouble with your nose? Are your teeth bad? Then throw away your head. <laughs> and now, and now for our story, Lizzie's other elbow. Or who put confetti in Grandpa's spaghetti? <laughs> we take you to the beautiful home of Lizzie Hagen Lasha. Lisha, don't go away. In the suburbs of Cucumber Valley, Mississippi. Mississippi. What no funny? What do we Mississippi? Last week we left Lizzie Hagen Schlager with her sweetheart Horace J. Hollibar. <laughs> As we listen in today, we hear Lizzie speaking to Horace. Oh, Horace, will you marry me? He says, No, Liz, I cannot marry you. I cannot marry you. She says, oh, Horace, you must marry me or I shall die. I shall die. I shall die. Tune in the same program next week and come to Lizzie's funeral. <laughs> Here's a word from RCA Victor. Year after year, more people buy RCA Victor television sets than any other make because year after year, RCA Victor television delivers more for your money than any other make. More great new features, more quality. So when you invest in a television set, insist on the favorite. Insist on RCA Victor. And for a really wise investment, consider RCA Victor's new television radio phonograph combination, the Rutland. Here in one beautiful cabinet, You'll find big, bright, steady 17-inch RCA Victor million-proof television, plus the latest and greatest RCA Victor AM and FM radio, plus two superb automatic record changers for recorded music at all three speeds. Yes, five superb instruments. Yet, because you pay for only one sound system, only one cabinet, their cost is far less than what you'd pay for comparable console instruments separately. See and hear the Rutland and the many other fine RCA Victor television sets available now at your RCA Victor dealers. Ladies and gentlemen,
and gentlemen, we have decided that this would be a good week to salute a great musician, composer, conductor, and the kindest, dearest man who has contributed so much to the big show, our very own Meredith Wilson. We offer now a medley of Meredith Wilson's hits, and here are Gordon McRae, Milton Berle, Rosemary Clooney, Jimmy Durante, Ethel Merman, the big show officer and chorus, and darlings, guess who? <laughs> Meredith, we stand ready to salute you, if you please, sir. Starting with the springtime song you wrote for our April 1st show. Here comes the springtime and there goes my heart. Holy, holy, hey, all my resistance is falling apart. Holy, holy, hey, sweet evening breeze, away to peace. Lilacs and smilers on hand, fresh morning dew. You, you are soaking me through with feelings I don't understand. Me, hearts are throbbing, the cricket will start. Only hardly hey, here comes the springtime, and there goes my heart. Holy hardly, holy hardly, holy hardly hey. For our Easter show, Melody wrote this lovely song. It's Easter time, the bells on the hill are ringing, ringing once again. There's a smile on the face of this weary world that seems to say amen. It's Easter time, the bonnets are gaily nodding, nodding to and fro. And the folks walk to church as they did so long ago. And there's a basket on the dining room table with fancy strength for all. And there's a lily in all its glory standing in the hall. It's Easter time, the dawn of the year is shining in the hearts of men. With the joys and the hopes that have risen once That song was presented on the very first big show way back in November. Every rose, every tree, and every bird and bee seem to rate a rondelay or two. So a slight poetic push for my favorite push would seem to be long overdue. Was the peony bush there in my garden that made you turn around to smile at me? Not singers or gardeners with their fragrant perfume. Forget me not, and fancy pots or orchids in me. Was the peony bush there in my garden? It did the trick as quick as one, two, three. Now you will decorate my garden gate forever and never and never will it be any bush but the peony bush for me. I love that song. (laughs) 
on our Valentine's Day broadcast, we presented Meredith's beautiful Two in Love. Two in love can face the world together. Bluebirds sing in everything they do. The world may rock and rumble, crowds may groan and grumble, roads may even thunder. Darling, two in love can face the stormy weather, laugh aloud at every cloud above, and so we'll show the moon. What love can do for you and I are two in love? It was only four weeks ago that Meredith wrote this song for our beloved Jimmy Durante. Kill the lily, I am flawed. Don't take Coronas to Havana. Take no oysters to the Pauling Mall. Now don't put bananas on bananas. Ain't no pimples on Molina's knee. Girls, must you figure that a bigger, better bigger? Don't put bananas if you. Another of your favorite songs presented on this season's big show was Meredith, You and I. Darling, you and I know the reason why a summer sky is blue, and we know. This inspiring American anthem was composed by Meredith as a part of our Abraham Lincoln tribute. Here on the shores that to freedom were born, O Lord, make us worthy of this land. Thou hast chosen.
was a real treat, Meredith, and we all enjoyed doing your lovely songs. We sure did, Tallulah. I like the way everybody sang here. I, I can use that kind of singing on my television show. Well, I've never been on television, darling, but of course... Ethel, uh, how about you coming on my television show Tuesday, huh? Oh, no, no. The last time I was on your show, you promised me a lifetime supply of Texaco. Well, you got it, didn't you? Yeah, but for my cigarette lighter? <laughs> no, I have a cigarette Gordy, lighter. Gordy, Gordy McRae, how about you on the show, huh? You want me to be on your television show? Yeah. How about money? Oh, I won't charge much. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid not, Milton. Uh, uh, but if you insist, Milton, I might consider this money. Rosemary, Rosemary Clooney, would you come over here? How about you? You want me on my television show? I have a feeling you'll be wonderful. I have a feeling you and I together will be great. I have a feeling we'll kill them. No, thanks, Milton. I know you, and I'm not interested in your feelings. Yo, Milton, if you darling. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Durante, you're just the one for my show, huh? I Please. might as well have stayed home and counted my money. <laughs> Jimmy, what about you? If you come on my television show, I'll come on yours. One, two, think it through. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you, Milton. I'll make an even trade with you. You appear on my television show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll watch yours. <laughs> well, I don't think so. Well, now, look, Milton, oh, if you're only... I'm overlooking a great performer. Well, I was wondering how long you'd be. Great love, Joy. <laughs> well, one nice thing. We only have to put up with him for 30 years. Uh, Frank, uh, Frank, love, Joy. How about it? You want to be on my television show, huh? Well, I don't know, Milton. I've never done anything on television. Oh, Frank, you'll be wonderful. Three, four, don't get sore. Look, Frank, this is a great opportunity for you. I, I can't promise you too much money since you're a beginner. You've got to start low. <laughs> oh, I guess starting on your show is about as low as you can get. <laughs> Right out of my mouth, darling. Oh, Tallulah, Tallulah. Yes, Milton, yes. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> that always happens to me. Well, maybe I'll have better luck next week. Our closing show for the season, when our guests will be Fred Allen, Lucien Boyer, Portland Hoffer, Groucho Marx, Ginger Rogers, Margaret Truman, Paul Wentzel and others, and, of course, our very own Meredith Wilson and the big show orchestra and chorus, and now, still another Meredith Wilson composition, the beautiful hymn he wrote especially as our good night to you each Sunday. May the good Lord bless and keep you for the near or far away. Rosemary, may you find that long awaited golden day today. Milton? May your troubles all be small ones And your fortune ten times ten Frank May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again Ethel May you walk with sunlight shining And a bluebird May there be a silver lining Black of every cloud you see Merit Fill your dreams with sweet tomorrow Never mind what might have been Jimmy May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet Again, God. May you long recall each rainbow, then you'll soon forget the rain. May the warm and tender memories be the ones that will remain. May the good Lord bless and keep you until we meet again. May the good Lord bless and keep you
Good night, darlings. And God speed to our armed forces all over the world who hear these broadcasts each week. The Big Show has been brought to you by famous Cannon Towels, the world's most popular towels, the towels that give you the most for your money. By Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The best cigarette for you to smoke. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Milton Berle appears with the courtesy of the Texas Company. The Big Show is produced and directed by D. Engelbach and written by Goodman Ace, Selma Diamond, George Foster, Mort Green, and Frank Wilson. This is Ed Hurley. Coming up, the Phil Harris and Alice Faye Show here on NBC.